family money or inside money? Which one should we take? The answer is you take what's available to you. And it, it goes a little further than that. And we're going to explore a couple of the big issues that are related to this. Most money raising for early stage people always starts with family money. In fact, the round is actually called friends and family. I mean, that's really what the initial seed funding for almost all deals is. It starts out as family money. Uh, there's pros and there's cons, obviously, to family money. And there's pros and cons to uh, other money, too. But we'll get to that in a minute. So as far as family money goes, here are some big issues that you need to be concerned about. Number one, uh, I don't know how much money your family has. Maybe they have a lot, maybe they have a little, but at least they'll help you get started. These are people who generally are going to be rooting for you to be successful. They're going to want you to be successful and they're going to want you to uh, do what it takes to get up and running. So they're frequently going to look the other way on things that third party or independent arm's length people uh, would not do. So if you don't have the best materials, you're not the most well organized, your story's not just right, uh, you know, these friends and family people are probably going to be a little more forgiving to you. On the other hand, uh, there's a couple of issues. The syndicator, the promoter sponsor, might think that just because they're uh, friends or family, that they don't have to perform at the same level. I'm not talking about produce on the real estate at the same level. I'm talking about make the sale at the same level because you're going to trade on that relationship. Always a bad idea to trade on uh, on the relationship. You really want to make the introduction with the relationship. But you want to trade on the substance of your deal. And that has to be the same whether you're dealing with friends and family, third parties, or otherwise. Another very important thing is a lot of times the syndicator, sponsor, promoter will somehow think they don't have to comply with the securities rules. They don't have to call the attorney. It's going to be less expensive. They can slide by. Let me assure you, that one sour apple, one unhappy investor, and I don't care if it's your grandmother, can cause you an awful lot of problems. So you wanna be very careful to be in full compliance, do everything just right, uh, go by the book, whether it's uh, your grandmother or whether it's uh, you know some stranger that, uh, that you've developed a relationship with over a long period of time, be very careful. Uh, here are some other issues. People who are in your family, if things go wrong, you're gonna be having Christmas dinner Thanksgiving dinner with these people. So you're going to have to deal with these people. That's, that's sort of a good thing in a certain way. I know as a fundraiser, I want the people who I deal with to have some skin in the game. There's no skin in the game like, uh, like a Thanksgiving dinner relative that's going to have to come to the table. So if something is going to go wrong, you're going to have to address that issue in a substantial way. You can't hide in the bushes like they're strangers that live in faraway places. I mean, that's, that's going to be something you're going to have to deal with and confront. So uh, just another issue of dealing with uh, relative, close, family, friends kind of people. As far as outsiders go, outsiders are obvious. You have to be by the book on everything. You have to make a thorough, comprehensive sale. These are generally people that have lots of choices. They're people that can make decisions. They can uh, make evaluations on their own. They might send things to their attorney, their accountant. They are not going to let their guard down. They're not going to look the other way just because they're related to you or they're friendly with you. These are people who are going to examine you carefully. And until you've earned their trust, you better perform. And once you earn their trust, you better continue to perform or the trust is going to go away because trust takes a long time to come and is quick to go. So you have to really think carefully about how you're dealing with your people. The other thing about dealing with uh, these third-party people is they probably are going to be able to give you a bigger uh, referral bucket because it's DNA from another environment. You're going to be able to tap into their networks in, in better ways uh, your family is probably somewhat limited. Maybe your uh, network overlaps with their network. So bringing people in from the outside is a really strong and powerful mechanism for helping your business to grow and, and all the way around. So there's pros and cons. Uh, I think the whole thing is strategic. I think you start with some of that friends and family money, but you parlay or you leverage that into uh, bigger money with some other people. So you may get your start with your friends and family money, but ultimately you're gonna to start to take money in from other people as well. You don't wanna stay with just the friends and family money, even if they are wealthy people. I think you wanna be very careful not to get too entrenched into a small group. You really wanna spread it out. Is it a little easier to go with a small group? It is a little easier, but that's not a business. That gets a lot closer to being a job because as soon as somebody changes their mind, dies, reorganizes, gifts their money away to somebody else, as soon as anything in the circumstance changes, 
you could be finding yourself out of a job, out of a business, and and really kind of done doing the many things that you set up to do. So be very careful. This is a great business. You just got to run it in a great way. And I just encourage you to go out and stake your claim. <laughs>